Timmy, are you going to drop some serious beats with that? Is that why you have a, like... This is City Bonus Features, and we would like to introduce Spike Van Briesen, the very talented, handsome, able to lift a lot of weight in the gym producer of the show. Everyone, round of applause for Spike. Give it up. So the city everyone knows was a spinoff of The Hills, and you were a producer on The Hills first. Like, when did the conversation about giving Whitney the facial reaction girl from the closet, her own show. I think when we went to Paris, right? I think there was a point where Sophia was telling me about it and saying, you know, this is all going to go down somehow, and we have to we have to figure this thing out. And then it kind of it kind of went away, and I just remember it was like the spinoff. Colin, one of the other producers. Um, uh, he was working on it. He left the hills, and then, and then all of a sudden, he was back in the office. I don't know. You don't know this, but and neither do you, Timmy. Anyway, so we're seeing Colin around because he he wasn't around. And he started developing it with Adam while we were shooting the hills, and then he. That's when they contacted me. You know, they they talked to Hisham, and they were like, "Will you go out there and do this?" And then they asked me to go out and do it. So we went out and shot the pilot with. Do you Hisham remember? was the original director of the hills and like responsible for the look and shooting it in 24p if i'm not mistaken and you know yeah yeah i think it was hisham had a really great vision for it and why they brought me in was basically because i i had come from film so that that i was able to help hisham achieve what he needed to do just by getting it organized and you know what I mean? Like set up so that we could do what we were doing. Were we shooting for the hills in New York when I met Jay? And then that was sort of like, oh, this could be good. And then we went back to shoot the pilot. Or did I meet Jay while we were shooting the pilot? I I'm forgetting how it all went down. Somehow Jay came into the picture. I wasn't aware of when he came into the picture. And yeah, I can't remember either. Maybe it was while we were shooting the pilot. Because I don't think he was in the pilot. Was he, did you go and interview at Diane von Furstenberg? Yes, so yes. He, right? He was, he, yeah. Right. That's why I think, I think we were shooting something for the Hills in New York and I met Jay. And then I think they were like, oh, this is so great. This can be like a reason Whitney moves to New York. And remember I come back and I'm in People's Revolution and I'm talking to Lauren and, and I'm like, I met this guy in New York. And then all of a sudden you're, I moved to New, to New York. Yeah. Got it. For a job, for a guy, who knows? Maybe for both. So what was the casting process like for the other people? You got to round out the cast, right? So how, do, how did you guys do that? Well, I was still shooting the hills while it was getting cast. Yeah, and, I um, can answer that. Yeah. Totally. Wait. <laughs> How did they I find mean, the like, Olivia? Oh, Olivia Adam found just because through like socialite people in New York. And then everybody else, Adam and Allie were through Jay because mm -hmm. Adam and Jay were roommates and they owned that restaurant together. Mm -hmm. And then it's jackpot. Like. Yeah. Allie was Adam's girlfriend. And then Aaron was my friend through previous ex-boyfriends. Uh -huh. And that's who the first initial cast was, right? Yeah, that's everyone. Yeah. And then Nevin came through Olivia. Yeah, exactly. Do you remember when I started working on the show and like what kind of employee was I? How was I to work with? So Sophia was like, I want you to meet my friend, right? He's going to be really good. You're really going to love him. And we were, you know, we were busy. Like there was a lot of things going on. And, and what that production was, was still very small in comparison to what productions are now. So I was just very much like, you know, Okay, okay. So I wasn't totally paying a ton of attention to it. No, no. Like, okay. I'm here now. <laughs> um, guys! Like, is anyone gonna notice that I'm not doing anything and then fire me immediately? I don't want that to happen. And so she, you know, she was pressing me and we were like, yeah, yeah, let's do it. And she was like, well, what can you do? And I think that it, what your first thing that I, I remember having you do was lock do a lockup someplace, which I remember you weren't happy with, that and it got back to me that you weren't happy with. <laughs> it did, it did. So the first night we were doing uh, a party 
and uh, it was at that guy like Smooth's house with the stripper pole. I had no idea what was going on. I never worked in the field before. And Spike was like, yeah. I was like, what can I do? What can I do? And, and uh, I think Colin was like, shadow Spike. And Spike was like super busy, like didn't have time for like some idiot like in his pocket. Like, like hey, <laughs> like can I talk to someone? Like, what? Get the fuck out of my face. Like, I'll kill you. He was like, go outside and make sure not too many people like get into the party. And I was like, what? Like, but are there any cameras down there? And he was like, get out of my face. And so I went downstairs and I stood, it was minus 10 degrees. I stood out there for about six hours with a security guy, just being on the, like the walkie. It was my first time on a walkie. Being like, hey Spike, like, are there enough people up there? Like, and just nobody w would reply. And then when people were like, can I get in? Can You're I get all in? pretty much like, go, everybody go to channel 10 except for Kenny. Right, right. right. Allie, Adam and Jay not being cast for the second season. Why and how did that go down? I think we, when we shot the first season, and I think we actually pretty much shot two seasons that first, but they would do these things where they would call them cycles. And it was basically, you know, because I, I think we shot uh, a lot of episodes. So what was happening is I think that sometimes a, a network will definitely be like, well, we need to shake it up, right? So I think that the way to shake it up was to see if we could find other, other people, right? So we started casting. And that was really what it was. I think that the, when we brought Roxy in, I think it got a little bit better. You know what I think would look like really good and really show off your jeans is if she takes her top off. And I think that when we brought in Kelly, it, you know, when she was playing a lot more, it, 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 it just got, it just elevated it. Roxy definitely is her own thing. Were you guys in room 615? Yes. What is this bill for $200? I'm sorry, at your level, I give you guys $50 a day per diem. That's 50, 50, 100. You owe me 100 bucks, I'll take it out of your pay. Go to Taco Bell next time. What planet are you living on? Right, and she's a ton of fun. And then we go to Elle and meet Aaron and Josie and, you know. Speaking of Elle, like how, how did that relationship start and like, I sort of just imagine like having worked with Adam a lot that like one morning he like saw a cover of Elle magazine and was like, that's cool. And that's like what fashion is about. Like, <laughs> like get me someone from Elle. And then he was like, Hey, have you ever heard of the Hills? Like I'm doing the spinoff like, and you're going to be on it. Yes. Adam, I think Adam just picks up the phone. And we, at that point, the Hills was huge, right? Huge. So we, we could, he could do that. And then at the same time, I mean, I think that anybody that talks to Adam knows how much passion he has. And he's funny yeah. and he's funny. So he'll go in and, and chat him up. And then I think that he would always use me to come in and kind of close, as, mm -hmm. right? Just to yeah. be like, here's the nice guy. He'll always be around. It's just so cool, the access that we had in that show. Cause even now, like, housewives or vanderpump rules or whatever like they're really popular but they don't get the same access to that kind of fashion totally. all the parties we got to go to all the designers we got to work with yeah, that we, wasn't normal for reality people to get connected gotta, with gotta give it to him right now it's, already <laughs> it's you around. you think it's timmy at the end i got my hands on like this fashion calendar and it had all these amazing oh, events yeah. and like it wasn't me but like I was the first phone call to like get the location and mm -hmm. then it was easy. And I would always say, if you know, you know, the, you know, the Hills, yeah. like 8 billion people watch it. Like uh -huh. you want a million people to see whatever on TV, like let us in. We would get upset if we had to pay for things. Right. right. Like we, I, I was told that that was not an option. Back then. But think about the access we got and think about yeah. the access, like where we, where we were able to do Like you could never do that today. We were talking about this earlier while we were watching an episode of The Hills. The cameras aren't with the cast 24-7, so in order to get story, drama, conflict, things you can put on TV while the cameras are rolling three times a week or whenever they're rolling, like you do have to produce. Jess Jones would, would be like your friend and be in touch with you over the weekend and find out what was really going on in your life, mm -hmm. and then she would come back on like Monday morning. We would sit and have a meeting with all the producers, and she would be like, well, this is going on, that's going on, this is going on, and... We talk about any events that we could, you know, have a scene at or whatever. And then like Spike and the, and the rest of the, you know, bosses would, would kind of put together, um, 
like a, a beat sheet. And I guess I would sit in there and help as the, as the story producer, like writing out what our ideal scenario for a scene at Adam's restaurant with Jay and Adam mm -hmm. would look like. Mm -hmm. And we'd look at the episodes before and, and what was to come and, and we'd try and connect storylines and Spike was always great at this, at, at having each scene have a purpose and, and move things forward. Mm -hmm. I, I always remember that was like something we had to focus on. Mm -hmm. And then we would go about planning these these scenes, where they would happen, who would be there, how we're going to shoot it. The next day, when the locations were locked or as locked as they could be, we would do like a, a tech scout and Gary, the director, would look at where the lights would go with Jack, the DP, and like set everything up and go through it, as Spike mentioned, before, before we actually had cast there. And then Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we would just shoot all day long. Yeah, and that process to that point was really, and the way that why did it look that way is because we would do those scouts, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and then if we knew the light that you were going to sit into, so if you were sitting into pretty light, you were, I mean, you, you guys were all beautiful, but, but it was, it was easier than to have you guys sit into that light and have that conversation. Conversation is still real. Right. And like, Timmy, like you said, we card it out and know that any of the cards could fall. And then right. any of the card that did fall is that what we were also looking for is how to go, okay, this just moved. How can we move this one forward? Right. Like, in the, and that's, truly like that's when i still get goosebumps about everything because i love telling stories right like you guys know that so i love like pushing these stories forward and they're and there's so much fun to watch in real time because coming from scripted it was always like you know and script is great everything's on a script everything's fucking just you know it is what it is mm -hmm. it was so you know spontaneous it, it could be really and live and in the moment and, mm -hmm. you know we're in the middle of clubs all the time too which was crazy like we right trying to listen and look out for other people who we could bring into it i mean spike talk about the party at bergdorf's the surfer dude book party where we first met freddie's brother i don't think freddie was even there but mm -hmm. we were we were at that party and it had nothing to do with guys really it was just for sammy and whitney and did you you saw they started talking about the guy. How did you see the junior Fackelmeyer boy? What we do is, we, you know, any place that we would go, that it just came, you just start looking for for interesting, beautiful looking people, right? Tel telegenic people is, is yeah, what we Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, <laughs> there's nothing like a grown man coming up to a, a boy that's still in college and like, hey man, uh, what's your story? Yeah, <laughs> you're handsome. Are you handsome? And then, you know, truly... What you're doing, which is still fun, because you would start to get the story at that moment from Harry. He's got this brother, right? You're looking at this guy. He's talking about this brother, right? And look, the Fackelmeyers, dude, they were like, they, I, you just can't, like, it's, you just can't script anything like that. Gareth one gareth is a huge fan huge fan he asked did the producers already have ideas for storylines for season three before it was canceled no i think that what we were really what we were trying to figure out is where can we shoot what can we do because a lot of the time when you weren't there right like who knows like if you guys would have ended up doing something we i i would have maybe we would have brought you in i don't know like we a lot of things happen when we are in our downtime mm -hmm. in your life so that we would then try to get from there, we would mm -hmm. try to uh, pick up. And if there was somebody new that we would bring in, then we'd, we'd really have to figure out how to bring that person in, is really what we would try to do. Oh, this is from Michelle Rabby 20 Hi, Michelle. What was the situation around Jay's return to get Whitney back? Did he contact the producers? Was he genuine in wanting her back? I remember this very well. This was outside of DVF. I think he went through, told me sure. he wanted to get back together. And, and then so I then probably like... told them. And then I um, knew I didn't want to get back together with him. So I was like, okay, we can film this. But like, I'm going to say I'm no. Gonna, yeah. It took me going away to realize that I really love you. Uh, maybe a little bit late, but it's better late than never. Yeah, but it's also too little, too late. If that was something that would come up, we would definitely, ending a season, we would tease it, and whether or not we would use it would totally be, you know, we'd figure out what we were going to do with it, right? Like, it's, a good, it's such a good storytelling. If this dude comes back, 
and we yeah. introduce it and you're like, yeah, you know. Tell us a little bit about what you're up to now. I, uh, I was offered a job at Fox Entertainment and um, by Rob Wade and who you know, he's, he, Timmy and I both worked with Rob on, on the X Factor. And uh, so now I am working, exactly. Uh, <laughs> I'm working at Fox Entertainment um, as a network executive. It's really exciting. It's really fun. Um, and it's a whole other side of the business that I've, I haven't had a chance to really do yet. And it's mm-hmm. really exciting. You're the best. Thank you, Spike. You're the best. Thank you. Thank you, Spike. And also, thank you very much.